Hello, how are you? Well, I am Hina from Team Tess and here I am continuing with our series of question answers for the examination of GATE. Okay, so shall we begin fast, fast today? Here is the first question. A lovely novel, a cautionary novel, a dystopian novel, 1984 by George Orwell. Let's see what does the question say. Which among the following is not true about 1984? Not true. Okay, we'll read the options one by one and understand. A. It was published on 8th June 1949 by Secker and Warburg as the ninth and final book completed in George Orwell's lifetime. Absolutely true. Secker and Warburg, you know, is a British publishing company. And Orwell's last book was this, 1984. Okay. And when was it published? 1949. Right. So A is correct. B. This book is a caustic attack on the totalitarian regime in Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany. Absolutely, it is. In fact, in this novel, George Orwell has given a caution. If something like this happens in Britain, this is what London will look like. Because the setting of this novel is London, a depressing London. Okay, so B is also correct. C. O'Brien is a member of the Brotherhood who assist Winston Smith to escape from room 101. No, 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 no. He did not help escape Smith. In fact, he is the one who got Smith caught, remember? Because O'Brien is secretly a member of the Brotherhood, while Winston Smith is a rebel. How is he a rebel? He fell in love with Julia. They both had a secret love affair, which was not allowed, right? Because... Everywhere it was written that Big Brother is watching you. And who's the Big Brother? The government. Okay. So C is not correct. Or D option, both A and B are not correct. No, no, no. A and B are correct. So the answer is C is not true about 1984. Okay. Okay. Do you remember what was this room 101? It was a torture room, okay, within the Ministry of Love, where you are met with your worst fear. And what was the worst fear of Smith? Rats, okay? So he was made face to face with rats. Understood? Let's move on. Question number two on your screens. Well, an American poet, Adrian Rich. Let's see what does the question say. Which of the following is written by Adrian Rich? Your options are A. Snapshots of a daughter-in-law B. A sunset of the city C. Not my best seaside or D. The, cards sh the card sharper's daughter Well, well, well. Do you know? What is it? Which work, which poem is written by Rich? You know it. It is snapshots of a daughter-in-law, option A. A little bit about Adrian Rich. Well, an American poet, a critic, in fact, a queer theory critic, right? And uh, she worked way ahead for homosexuality and she was an awesome woman, okay? Now, can you tell me a little bit about the other three works? We must know Kisne Likha. Okay, so I will tell you. A Sunset of the City, written by or composed by, because it's a poem, composed by Gwendolyn Brooke. Not My Best Side, composed by U.A. Fanthorpe. While The Card Sharper's Daughter, which is a short story, written by Vikram Muhammad Bashir. Perfect. Well, if you like these question answers and you want your own book, an exclusive book for the test paper of GATE, you must order it from the number I gave you. Okay, let's move on to question number three. Again, long options. Don't worry. Quite easy. They're telling us what is not true about EPIC. Which of the following is not true about EPIC? So let's move on. Option A. 
it is considered to be the second greatest form of art by Aristotle in his poetics. Absolutely. Aristotle first revered tragedy and then epic. So yes, it is the second greatest form of art. So option A is correct. Option B, it is defined as a long verse narrative on a serious subject told in formal or elevated style and centered on a heroic or quasi-divine figure on whose action depends the fate of a tribe or a nation or the entire human race. Very right. It is a long verse narrative. It has a serious subject. It has formal or elevated style. It has a hero, quasi-divine figure, you know, the whose action, the fate of an entire tribe or nation that depends. So B is correct. Some of the famous epics, as you know, grandiose, Odyssey, Iliad, Paradise Lost, The Fairy Queen. Yes, so B is correct. C, it is the simplest form of narrative with music as an important component. No, no, no. Ballets are simpler than narrative, uh, simpler than epic. Okay, so C option, not correct. D, an epic poem is a ceremonial performance and is narrated in a ceremonial style, which is deliberately distanced from ordinary speech and proportioned to the grandeur and formality of the heroic subject and architecture. Absolutely correct. So D is correct. Now let's go to E. Epic has been succinctly defined as an incongruous imitation. That is, it imitates the manner or else the subject matter of a serious literary work or a literary genre, but makes the imitation amusing by a ridiculous disparity between the manner and the matter. No, no, no. An incongruous imitation is burlesque literature, right? It is burlesque. Okay. So E is also not correct. So what is not true about epic? Option C and E. You got it right? Did you like it? I loved it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to question number four. Literary theory and criticism. Dot, dot, dot. A text made of multiple writings drawn from many cultures and entering into mutual relations of dialogue, parody, consternation but there is one place where the where this multiplicity is focused and that place is the reader not as was hitherto said the author the birth of the reader must be at the cost of the death of the author which theoretical school does, does the excerpt best represent you know it you know it right birth of the reader is equal to death of the author Post-structuralism, should I tell you the options first? A, reader response criticism, B, formalism, C, new criticism, or D, post-structuralism. And I already told you the answer. It is D, post-structuralism. Well, you know what post-structuralism says, right? Well, it is a movement in philosophy, began in early 1960s, ended in late 1970s, and it says, reader replaces the author as the primary subject of inquiry. Why? Because ultimately, or after all, it is the reader who makes the meaning of the text, right? Who deciphers the meaning, right? Great. Okay, tell me the people, the famous ones who wrote about post-structuralism, the proponents of this movement. You know them, right? It is? Roland Barthes, perfect. Jacques Derrida, yes. Michel Foucault, yes, you got it right. And let's move on to the last question of the day. Who asserted that we might remind ourselves that criticism is as inevitable as breathing? Your options are A, Virginia Woolf, B, W. B. Yeats, C, Graham Greene, or D, T. S. Eliot. You know it. Yes, you do. Well, it is. It is option D, T. S. Eliot. In which book did he say this? He wrote it in Tradition and the Individual Talent. Okay, you got it. Did you like it? I liked it. 
And thank you for watching. If you want your own practice book for GATE, you can order it on this number 93878-39871. Moreover, if you want an online class of GATE from our dear Kalyani ma'am, and if you want an online quiz, you can contact on the same number. Thank you so much for watching and being with me for all this time. I am going to come again with more such question answers. It was lovely here. Bye.